started. Um, but again, welcome. For those of you just joining us, if you would drop your name, company, and um, and where you're from in the chat would be appreciated. Um, let me pull up a little information here. Um, so before I get started on introducing uh, Nick and Kai Zapp, I just want to mention that we have our executive session next Friday on the 17th, led by Josh Reneker. The, wor the world, is it world renowned now or it's beyond Indianapolis, sure. correct? Yeah, we'll stick with the world. That's fine. Okay. So world renowned Josh Reneker is going to um, be leading the executive session next Friday. So if you have an opportunity to jump in, please do. Um, we also have an exciting June coming up. Uh, we've got George Sample coming in as a presenter to talk HR and all, and all things uh, retention and hiring and um, and so forth. And then we have our first member conference that we've had like in our 20 year history. Like it's long overdue. So if you want to have the opportunity to meet to fellow members from across the CO forum, now's your chance. June 25th, uh, no, 26th, excuse me, in uh, Indianapolis. Josh's uh, backyard, which is great. We won't actually be in his backyard. We're actually going to be at a really nice uh, event center. But and I'm sure Josh will mention a little bit more about that at the end. So um, just wanted to let everyone know about our upcoming events. And uh, with that, let me um, get on with the show here uh, and pull up. Um, so today's uh, workshop on strategic approach to cost reduction, we uh, were delighted to have uh, Nick and Leslie with us from Kaizap. Um, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, Nick, I'll, I'll let you uh, introduce your, your company a little bit more as well. But um, Nick is founder, uh, uh, one of, uh, I guess, a few founders of a, an awesome team um, at Kaizap. He's He also is their CEO. And Nick has also been a COO, so this is a good opportunity to pepper him with questions as an experienced COO. And he's been at companies such as uh, Sun Capital Partners, ABB, uh, Anglo American, and so on. Um, and he's spent his entire career really focused on on helping organizations transform their performance outcomes. Um, and um, he brings a unique perspective. We're excited to have him. And I think with that, I just need to shut up and hand it over what do you say nick okay perfect yeah thank you thank you very much uh, chuck thank you great great to be here thanks all for coming up I, i'm very confident that you're gonna really value this session by, by by the end so i am a i am a someone who's held several seal i think four four or five coo roles some permanent some as interim uh, so i i did multiple coo roles and then decided i needed to build this software um, because the challenge is in performance improvement in problem solving and continuous improvement, in project delivery, in tracking all the money. Are so, they're so great. It's so complicated with the current technology. It's so time consuming of all our managers and leaders. Uh, I, I, and we do all of this completely away from the shop floor or from the front line if you're in services. Um, they're not involved at all. And yet they're the ones that know that are going on. I say not involved at all. They, they, they can't see anything. They're not involved in any system. And that, that, so they're kind of blind to everything we get that's going on. So they're they're so, so that they're, that they're, they're somewhat sort of well very disengaged really. Um, if you've worked on a shop floor role as I did in my very when I first started work after my degree, um, did, I did sort of nine months in Germany, jobbing it around Germany as a shop floor operator, five or six different companies, and you realise just just the extent to which you feel completely ignored as a shop floor worker. Yet they're the ones that are literally got their hands on the flow of value. They're not part of any system. Um, yeah, so it's very, anyway, so it's, as you as you probably recognize some of those themes there, it's very, very, very um, complicated and time consuming today to, to, to mobilize the masses in problem solving and in performance improvement project identification and delivery. Uh, so so just, to, just my background, just a little. So uh, my previous role before starting Kaiser was I was a group chief operating officer with Sun Capital Partners. So that's obviously a um, Florida-based uh, private equity group, 40 billion of, uh, of revenue of, uh, of businesses. And my, my role there was sometimes I stepped into those portfolio companies um, in a COO capacity. Uh, a lot of the time I would be used to drive performance improvement very, very rapidly, uh, turn around factories that are that are uh, dragging down the valuation before an exit. So you want a factory turn, you know, taken from you know minus two, three million to plus two, three million in nine to 12 months. That was my that was my problem. And uh, I always did it in a way that that 
excited the people, the customers, and and the management. It's, you've got to bring the people along along with you so it's sustainable. Um, okay, so I also was global head of supply chain for ABB, another very big group. Um, group COO for Valio. Valio is a, originally a California-based uh, confectionery group. Um, I had a global head of manufacturing supply chain role within um, a big division of uh, Anglo, well, the manufacturing division of Anglo-American. Um, and previous to that, I was um, back in services. Um, I also have services experience. Um, so I was also the global head of operational excellence for uh, uh, RSA, which is like, a, I think today they're like a $40 billion a year, uh, I think that's what they are, um, insurance group. Uh, okay, so that's probably enough about about myself. Uh, well, just actually, just just a few more points. Um, so I spent about thirteen years in consulting, probably fifteen years in um, in line management roles. So I've kind of good balance between consulting and and um, uh, and operations. Okay, so with that, I think I should share slides, and we'll and we'll um, share some slides, and we'll we'll, we'll crack on. Uh, if you do have questions, I may not I may not see them because um, I'll be screen sharing. So. Leslie, maybe you'll interrupt me if there's anything anything I should uh, uh, respond to. No problem. Full screen. All right. Is that working? Can you can you see? Okay. Yes, we can see. Yeah, as yes, you can see. Okay, great. So. So the, the, the company I'm working for now, I'm, I'm CEO of Kaiser, which provides this software. Today's subject is this strategic approach to, to cost reduction. So we're not spend much time on the software. I'm going to talk much more about how it can, how it, well, how we would accelerate um, cost reduction and, and, and actually other forms of uh, value generation for, for the business. So Kaiser itself, just briefly, just on this slide, um, is to operations. So this lovely sentence here. To operations, what salesforce.com is to sales. So if you think about it, salespeople, they have an application that helps them with all of their prospects, the process through it, the tracking the money, that they have a system for that. If you think about operations, okay, ERP is not really for operations, right? Um, there isn't a system. What we do, we, we make do with PowerPoint, with Excel, with Word. Uh, we, we, those are applications designed for office purposes. They were not designed for improvement. If you really think through what we need to do with improvement in, in our organizations, none of those applications even vaguely fit the bill. And they're, they're point solutions that we've all become familiar with. But, what, what, but you know, it's like the frog in a frying pan example. You know, turn the heat up, the frog stays in the frying pan and gets burned. You know, we, we've got used to them. We just keep using them. And we, don't ref, we, haven't, we haven't really reflected on just how inefficient we've become with improvement, how much, how much they're holding us back. Um, from being able to improve more, more and solve problems more, more rapidly. Uh, so, so Kaiser's designed specifically to do this job of having the, the the front line or the shop floor, the middle management, the the leadership, and right up to the top, even the CEO, group CFO, and the financial community, all come in the same application. Everyone can see all of the projects, all of the the problems that the front line are, are solving, and we can support them with with with, with um, like business case creation and tracking, um, so so we know where we are with the with, with the money, so we can prioritize. We can share search engine at all. We even have AI that you know if we if we feel in some locations we have um, you might I mean you always have this right. In, in some locations you'll have a, a weaker team. There's AI in there to help solve all the problems, which is in, which is incredible. But then all all the, all the problems are um, everything is there to be searched. Okay, so so yeah. Uh, Filling, filling, a, filling a real a real gap, and that's why I basically essentially stepped back as a as a COO to 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 build this because I needed it for my for my roles. Uh, I was naive enough to think I could build it and continue being a COO. Anyway, so that's me uh, at the top there. Leslie's on the call. I'm I'm hosting the call. There are two others who may help with facilitation at at, at, um, at different points in time. But just to introduce the the, the three of us, I'm obviously going to be the main the main speaker today. Okay, so our agenda. So how to assess if your operation is ready to realize its performance potential around the subject I've described, which is the, the problem solving and the performance, performance improvement projects. What, what obstacles get in the way of realizing that potential, right? And how to overcome them? How, how, how this application Kaiser can help with that? And then based on what we talk about today, 
the top three things that, that you could literally go away and do straight away um, with minimal if no budget. And you could literally just do those things yourself uh, and you'd be able to get a, get a, get, 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 get a lift. Okay. Okay. So start, we start here with the benefit, right? So sometimes we can lose sight of, uh, of what really the prize is here, right? So if we look at the, the first, the first, uh, the first block here, so organic growth, right? So we forget that this is heavily associated with operations, right? So customers stay with us because the service is reliable. The more they don't, they don't, they don't stay for bells and whistles. They stay because the service that they want is highly reliable. It's quality, cost, delivery. Uh, you could express that in some other terms in, in, in some industries, but that's number one, the reliability. They'll stay, okay? So now the problem is that change is constant, right? Everything's changing. The people are changing, the machinery changes, the, the products change, the materials in them change, the processes change, we lose the knowledge. All of that happens and it's just impossible to, to update everything. You, you know, so, so managers alone can't cope with it. Um, they'll just get behind. And depending on the context and volatility, we can get very much more behind or, or maybe a little less behind, but it tends to be a, an oscillation. But essentially, we, we do need more employees than just management to keep up with this because it is, it is overwhelming. Uh, now, the result, if we don't keep up with this, we get the result is we will get a lower service. You know, so you get some issues with quality. We have some temps in for a period and some more issues with quality and cost. And, you know, all, so all these things are affected. Service that, that the customer actually feels um, is usually different to what we measure. I've never found a company that measuring their, 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 their KPIs, they measure for quality, cost and delivery are the same ones that the customer sees. The customer always sees it slightly more negative. It's amazing how that always adrift. Um, okay, so so we have a lower, uh, not a low service, but it's lower than it could be. Um, you know, customers slowly get irritated and they start to they start to churn. They'll still look elsewhere. And the amazing fact is, of course, if our if our customer retention were were ninety percent, and we moved it to ninety five percent, so five percent more, uh, we grow sixty three percent. So our sales, the, the business would grow sixty three percent over ten years which is amazing, amazing, right? So, so actually through, through, through recessions in the past, I've, I've worked for a CEO who recognized this and, prior, and prioritized performance improvement over, over sales and innovation because you recognize that the operations could be the leading driver of growth if through all the different challenges and pains of a, of a recessionary environment, we would just, just retain customers better than competitors. They're very, very, very smart. Okay, the, obviously the, the obvious one is the EBITDA impact, right? So every employee can contribute to cost reduction solving problems. And problem solving is a skill. Project delivery is a skill, but problem solving is even more of a skill. Coaching around that requires a, a, a very simple technique, which is easy to learn. Um, it's amazing, most people don't, don't, don't know it. Uh, and and world-class manufacturers, so shop floor team leaders will solve they actually KPI'd on solving two real problems per month. Now, there is support for that provided by the manager who's also been, been, been developed. So that's, that's advanced, okay? But there are many companies doing that. And now in, in, in this case, you're talking about a, for, you know, for a really highly competitive company in a competitive sector, you can get EBITDAs of 15 to 20% where, where we're doing this really, really well. And that's that that that's that's phenomenal because most companies in competitive industries are not are not you know will struggle to do more than the ten percent uh, EBITDA. So we want this EBITDA and we want this organic growth. We want these benefits, right? That's 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 why we're here. Okay, so for this session I'm I'm hosting now, we put out a um, a, a a diagnostic or an assessment to do it up front. Some people have done that, and that, and if you haven't, that's fine. It, it really won't matter, and you, you can. Obviously, you can do it after anyway, but um, it really won't matter, and you'll and you'll 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 see why. So, but what I have done is those that have completed the the diagnostic, I've, I've averaged their not show any names, I've averaged their results, and and I'll, I'm going to show the results and talk to and talk to those, and that's why it doesn't matter if you haven't completed the survey. Okay, so so the the diagnostic is a um, it's a series of questions that you answer, and these show the scores. I'm sure you're all familiar with maturity profiles and spider diagrams. So we get a, a spider diagram as, a, as an output and that shows us the maturity of a performance improvement process. Okay, so, so having analyzed those results, I'm just gonna talk you through the, the, the model just briefly. 
Um, and that, so, so I'll now describe these four axes of strategic cost reduction, right? So the first one is, and it's the, the axis I'm talking about is symbolized by the, the orange line here, okay? So we're gonna talk about, first of all, about, about leadership and, uh, and board support, right? So just, just talking to these two points, first of all, so I'm just gonna explain, I'm gonna explain these four axes you see with these lines, uh, and then we'll go through the, what came out in the assessment and talk to that. So of leadership, okay? So, you know, John Quincy Adams, the, uh, the sixth US president, he's apparently one of his very famous quotes is that if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more and to do more and become more, you are a leader, right? Um, so it's really, actually a really profound uh, statement there. I wish I had been the first person to, 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 to coin that. Very, very powerful. Um, so that's saying a lot about uh, a leader's behaviors. Uh, and if, if through those behaviors, you're going to effectively be someone who wants to be, wants to be copied, um, then that's actually profound for the subject we're talking about, which is, which is um, performance, in, performance improvement. Because improvement doesn't happen if it isn't led. Now, as a senior leader, you don't actually have to do too much um, to spark this to life. Um, but what you do is quite is very important. Now, um, so if we have have this knack of of being a great, recognized and seen as a great leader, that someone that people want to whose style they want to emulate, um, then what they ne then need to do in the leadership aspect of this is is cascade that down the organization levels. So you have that. So a very, very simple technique to improvement leadership that you do, just role model at the top and gets adopted at each level uh, going down. There are companies that have done that very effectively. It's not a not really a very difficult thing to do. It just needs a little bit of a little bit, little bit of thought. Uh, and clearly the you know the 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 board at the very top have to be have to be kind of behind it and supporting. Um we'll talk about what that means uh, a little bit later. Okay. So the second axis, right? Uh, is called uh, talent and uh, collaboration. Now, for collaboration, just to make an example, you know, Microsoft Teams is not really it's not really collaboration. It's it's communication. So, if as collaborate, if you think about collaboration as a as a as a as a like a something the size of an iceberg, the Microsoft Teams bit would just be the, the very thin triangle at the top. Because um, what really matters in collaboration is this this visibility of information, this instant visibility of what you need. So there's access to all of the improvements, all of the problems, all of the projects, all of the data, business case, being able to, 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 to find that almost instantly across the whole organization. So it's across people, so we can collaborate across people, okay, across problems, across projects, across teams, collaborate, collaboration across shifts. That's all, we know that's, all, that's already not easy, right? Across functions, across sites, across countries, and even across languages. So, you know, I want to be able to, you know, develop an improvement in one country in one language and another, and, and you know, in another language, in another language in another country, they can find that and read that in their own language, or even even solve a problem in multiple languages. Um, but whoever's looking at it, it just sees everything in their language, right? So there's real collaboration around all of the data, and it's so important because we never quite know where where that key bit of information, that key, that key know-how lies that is needed to unlock. Um, that that you know that that challenge that operational challenge in terms of the talent um the dna um the right talent brings that improvement mindset so good example here actually is um um toyota who when they when they hire uh, they, they talk about interviewing they, they talk about hiring about one in 15 people they interview and the one they're picking is the one that's got this improvement mindset it's their main hiring criteria because they appreciate the scale of value that's involved in in this because the operations never stay as we leave them right they, they all this change just they, they, they you tend to deteriorate unless we maintain their their performance right makes sense everybody makes it makes sense to everybody okay so on the the third axis uh is this ops and performance strategy and management system right so a written management system, sorry, a written, a written strategy and plan with a great business case, right, is always going to win support and, al and allow the many to contribute toward the goal, right? So I have a particular experience here where um, 
but actually worked Anglo-American. I worked for a CEO called Cyrus Giller, who today runs, uh, he manages the wealth of one of the richest people on the, on the planet. But he's a former Bain CEO, very, very, very smart, um, smart chap. So I, I pitched uh, a global improvement program to, to him and he, he shelved countless other initiatives to, to launch this uh, and, and run this program. So I've seen as a sort of a five year performance improvement program. And um, I was, I mentioned him being very impressed with the way that he made it the number one program in the whole company as he recognized the, uh, the, the value that was, that was, that was described. This was a recessionary, in this case, this was a recessionary situation We're going into a recession. Uh, and you just recognize the, uh, the, 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 the the, the growth potential through operational improvement in a in a, in a recession situation. Uh, now the second one here we've got is the system of management and its and its cadence. So you know if our coaching technique is is tag, so tag, you're familiar with target actual gap. So if I if I coach, I will I will I will ask for example, what's the performance now? Where are we now? And you'll say, well, okay, so what is the target? And we're obviously looking for some quantification, not just um, um, qualitative in, in, information. So, what's the, what, where are you now? What's the target? Okay. So, what's the gap? So, so what's your next step? So, we can have you know a really really nice coaching approach based on on, on tags that's that we can use similar language for over and over. So, it's infectious and fun, and and then we want to deploy that down the down the um, down the organization levels, right? And that's you know one that that's sort of I'm emphasizing the coaching part of the. Of the management system, which is a lot more to management system, as you all as you all know. I'm emphasising the performance improvement um, aspects of the uh, of it there. Okay, so the fourth axis is financials and technology. So yeah, fi finance is a, is a fascinating one. So often are not really included. In fact, I haven't I have rarely seen finance particularly integrated into any um, performance improvement program uh, they'll sign off the numbers at the end but actually involved in a little bit of the thinking of what the improvement is and uh what, what the numbers are around that um actually rarely happens even on consulting programs i've been on many of them um many big corporate improvement programs they tend not to be part of it there's one experience i had where i was with um rsa insurance group um so a services example uh, where we actually had finance really at the heart of all of the improvement projects and, and the problem solving and the value, the value that they had to add um, really amazed me. So having finance in there is super important. You probably all agree instinctively, but uh, it doesn't, we, we don't really have the technology to make it happen. Because again, if we're using Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, SharePoint, you know, et cetera, um, it's not really, it, 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 it's, it's, let's just say it's very labor intensive um, to enable this. It's not automatic. Uh, finance don't automatically have access to all of the information that the improvement projects are, are, are working on. Okay, so on the technology side, we need the technology to enable visibility and the collaboration. Um, there isn't, and, and bring everyone together. So with, with the right technology solution, you can have the shop floor, the middle managers, the seniors, all in one system, able to see everything, clear about alignment, clear on the targets, clear on prioritization, and then most of the admin just stripped away. You never need to write a presentation because it's just, you know, it's in the it's written in the software. So, so the technology to, to enable improvement is and this collaboration, this visibility that leaders particularly need is uh, absolutely vital. So those are the four, the four axes, okay? We've got these sort of the eight capabilities um, around the circle there. Does that all make sense? All those, those eight themes make sense? Yeah. Okay. I, I I can't see any any reactions because I I'm on screen share unfortunately. So do do send any any questions or feed, feedback in. I'll take them as I go along. Organization. If you think organization is missing, it would sit in on here. It would sit within uh, within management system, within within that capability. Okay. So the score. So so those of you that did the diagnostic tool, as I say, I took the average and I've I've plotted that so we can see it. If say, again, if you haven't done, haven't done the um, the diagnosis, not a problem. You, you'll you'll benefit equally. Okay, so so the the first axis that, that is diagnosed is this board support and leadership, and this is showing the questions. You don't need to read them. Here are the scores. So that's the spot score, thirty percent. So this is 0%, percent, obviously, and this is going to be a hundred percent. 
So, so there's a range, we should be so the arrow shows the range and the percent is the score. I just need to keep an eye on, a little bit of an eye on time. Okay, so, so 30% for board support was the average score and you can see the spread. Okay, and also, not unsurprisingly, 30% <laughs> for, for, for leadership. Okay, so these are usually going to find these are tied together unless we just launched a program, you know, and board supports up here. Uh, and this and leadership is just just lagging in, in time a little. So, so I've now plotted the board support and leadership on the uh, on the spider chart, and you can see that every chart has four of these to come, right? And the first one is just only showing the diagnostic scores for leadership and board support. I mean, they're both about uh, thirty percent, so just below the the thirty three, the sixty six, and a hundred. So just just below the thirty three. So with board support, so what, what was what's diagnosed is people have said that the board support's weak. So board support and understanding are, are weak, right? Very, very common. Uh, a lot of boards are far more passionate about, in my experience, about uh, sales and about innovation and the commercial side of it all, right? And understand, understandable. Now, um, so, 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 so solving this depends on over time, educating the board. So the, my Anglo-American role, my CEO there, um, added me to the, the the global leadership team for Anglo-American. And and, he, and, he, and when he you know called me to his office and appointed me to do that, he said to me, "What I want you to do." He, he was fortunate; he understood this. So he said, "What I want you to do with this this global group of top forty leaders um, was 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 educate them in this, particularly around his take on it was customer service. So the way I described, you get growth." If you minimize irritation, uh, irritation for the customer, right? Uh, that particular point around that he called customer service, he wanted uh, the global leadership group to be to be educated in that strongly over a period of time. Um, yeah, so a powerful business case that really that really pulls together all of the benefits, the full business case for performance improvement programs. So the retention of customers, the growth, the EBITDA, all, all, you know, all, all of that together is very, very, always very powerful, right? Okay, so, so if the board support is lower, right, then it's likely that the board are not paying a lot of, so much attention to it. So how are leaders going to respond to that? Right? It's not, you're not, we're not going to get, we're unlikely to get fantastic leadership of improvement cascaded down the organization if the board aren't particularly interested. Uh, harsh words you know if the board aren't paying a lot of attention to it it's unlikely to to to, to cascade down the down the organization because it's not that's not so much of a priority right so i'm not asking about it so it's not happening so um so how how, how do i do this i i, I mean if i'm going to cascade this leadership as i said earlier you know improvement happens when it's led it has to, it absolutely has to be led otherwise it it stops and the leadership comes from the top, but it, but it, but when we talk about leadership, we're really talking about each level, each level in the chain. Um, so I've always made that work with a really kind of a, a slightly different style to what I'm using now. But I use it when I'm on the job. I use a very infectious kind of coaching style with a minimal language. You know, people learn the the, the sentences that I that I that I repeat over and over. You know, someone says something, how do you know? You know, if I send something, it's not not founded in fact. How do you know? Yeah. And then what is best practice? You know, you'll be familiar with these, no doubt. But I try to recycle the same phrases over and over again so people learn them. Uh, and that's, you know, the, the, the very beginning of um, how you cascade um, leadership of improvement. And another very important one, obviously, recognition incentives. We need to we need to um, recognize problems solved far more strongly than. Uh, than, than kind of reactive actions that save the day. Because if we recognize heroics more, we're not going to get that, that, that much harder, more concentrated, more deliberate, um, slow thinking kind of problem solving. Uh, it's much more difficult than, than um, you know, pulling something off at the last minute. Um, so we need to recognize it that way. Incentives. So leaders, may we may give leaders senior leaders an incentive. Generally, best practice is that we don't pay for improvements. Uh, you can do, eventually it tends, tends to backfire. Um, the incentives into the workforce are usually improvements in working conditions, whether that's you know, a microwave in the office or improved social facilities or improved canteens. You know, it, it tends to be an improvement in facilities that, that benefit everyone. 
uh, and those are, those are much more powerful for motivating the the, the, the group over the individual. Okay, so the the second axis was collaboration and talent. So how was that scored by the respondents? So we got a interestingly a, a much higher number of sixty percent for collaboration, right? So basically, we're saying collaboration performance improvement is is widespread, but it lacked the project visibility and easy access to live information. So there's sort of not good sharing of practice across locations. And then for talent, we're down in twenty percent. Now I assume. I assume that this doesn't mean um, our people aren't capable of it. I assume this means we're we're struggling for resource, the resource to do it. It's a common common complaint, and there is a solution. There's a very clear solution to to that. So look, here we here we plot it. So we start to get now an, and and now we've got two axes. We start to get an area. Okay. So the arrow and the line is always helping you see which which axis we're talking about, and we have the two arrows here. Okay. So. So if we talk first about collaboration, so we said, you know, good collaboration, but really difficult to share, right? So the only, so this is, a, this is an enormous cost, right? Because if you have operations where uh, the, the, what the operation is doing is similar across multiple locations, so not identical, you can have um, different factories, but you've got multiple factories doing roughly the same thing with similar processes. Actually, all of those facilities um, at different points in time, are solving all of the same problems, right? That's profound, right? Because probably, and you know, if we're talking about you know four factories, then seventy-five percent of the time, or operations, I should say, seventy-five percent of the time, um, another site has probably solved the problem you're facing, but you don't know who, you don't know where, you don't have access to the data, and we can't we can't search it because all the projects we've done are in you know, Word docs, PowerPoint files, and Excel files. You can't find it. So what we do is we go, we go and solve it. We go and solve it again. So there's massive reinventing the wheel because we haven't got a great way to search or automatically be, be shown um, a very, very similar improvement done somewhere else. Could even be on the same site if we're talking about big sites or in another site. Um, yeah, so there's a massive, massive cost to, to this. And then talent. So... Lim I, I, limited resource and skill. So it can be skill, but we, you know, we, skill can be developed. Um, but limited resource is, is uh, obviously more pain. We've got enough people. So the, the, the answer here is actually we can usually get massively more done through line management. Uh, the reason not is because of all of these sort of outdated manual um, Microsoft Office files um, um, way of working, actually it's really, really time consuming saving files to folders, can't find them, um, have to write a presentation every time I want to do an update. These things are time killers. I, we, we have clients who say that um, uh, their management level spend more time on Teams and writing PowerPoint slides than anything else. Uh, the majority of that time can go back into performance improvement with the right solution. Okay, so um, yeah, huge, huge, huge point there. So, so, so Already, we're we're seeing that you know the response average of the response so far is is a relatively relatively sort of um, beginner level of of performance improvement capability, right? It's so a huge potential to improve that. Okay, so the the I think this is the third axis. So we've got operations, performance strategy, and management system. So here we see a, a thirty percent, not much of a range on it, and the missing arrow says there's no range, so twenty percent. So we have performance improvement as part of our operation strategy, but Back the board support, okay. And this one, we have different methods uh, in different sites, um, ad hoc, nothing formal, okay. So it's quite a, it's quite the sort of the 101, 102 sort of level there. Um, so with operation form and strategy, so you know, yeah, so if we have a lower level support for the strategy, the strategy I assume isn't compelling. We haven't made it compelling enough, right? So the 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 making the benefits case clear and, and full and clear um it's obvious i think but maybe there are more even more benefits than 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 we're actually describing um okay uh, and is the board clear on what we want them to do so i would always get uh, over time board members to come onto site and take part in a, a kaizen event or a problem solving event on the front line and see for themselves what the capability is, you know, what's being missed, um, what more we can go after. That's just prof profound that they have that, that understanding. 
Um, okay. Yeah, and, and then the management the management system again. Uh, if we want that consistency, that's very difficult without quite specific tools, right? So if it, a, a technology makes that far that far far easier. So a clear technology play um, for the, the the standardization of projects and problem solving and across all locations is actually standardization is br brought about immediately um, with that approach. Um, but without it, you know, value will just fall between the cracks, right? Uh, as I'm sure you're all you're all more than aware. Okay, so I think the, the fourth axis is, is technology and financials, okay? So you see the assessment scores once again. So technology, we had a 40%, okay? So we have and not much spread on that. So we have some digital solutions in use, but they're not designed for improvement, okay? And then the next one we have for financials, okay? So we have, we are all 40% 40, 40 but a bigger spread. So we have, we are aware of the need to track the benefits of promise improvement, but have no plans to do so at at present. So in this one, I assume there is at least some level of of um, of financial benefits uh, tracking, but not all of the the benefits. And and probably in this example, we're probably focused on tracking the the financials of priority projects and not really having the capacity to to go any 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 further than that. Okay, so. Yeah, so the challenge in not tracking performance improvement benefits. So you know, what we need to do here with the financial one is, is really good. We've got to integrate finance into ev into every project. So to give you a, a vision, right? So imagine frontline worker or shop floor worker, team leader, so anyone in a front shop floor front line, you know, can ca captures uh, an improvement idea or a or, or a problem that they're experiencing. That that's captured with the evidence, with the picture, with the video, what it is. All, it's all it's all, all there, captured in. That's in that happens in seconds, right? Okay. Finance is part of this team, and they're able to work with uh, the whoever created this or their manager, uh, understand it, and, and decide is there a business is there a business case behind this? Some there isn't for every project, right? Or every improvement. Most there is, okay. And sometimes it's evolving finance um, can. Other stakeholders, you know, fresh perspective, and un unlock a lot of a lot of value. Um, but imagine finance are in there, and they can just behind that. Because imagine, you know, that the person who captured it has no competence to 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 come up with the business case. They're, they're not comfortable with it, and they get worried that they're going to be you know be held to some target they set that's not really founded, right? So so finance in there, finance can create that business case, and they can track it, and they can, can actually do that without the product owner even knowing that, even really knowing that they're there. Um, so super important to have finance right in there for the ideation and, and you know, leaders, I think at CO level, you're really motivated where there is um, a great business case. We're mo that's what motivates us to, to get involved. So if we don't pull out the business cases and, and top them all up and see the value, we uh, leaders, you know, plant manager level, even plant manager level will not um, pay much attention. Okay, so the the final one is the technology. Okay, so so we saw in that um, survey there that so this software being used for improvement, but they're not designed for improvement. So so nothing is connected, right? Everything's disconnected, independent files, you know, islands of files in folders that we can't find, right? So obviously the the the, the technology can resolve a lot of this by putting everyone in um, and making everything visible appropriately, but making everything visible and everyone and everyone in. So we have alignment, we have clarity, we can collaborate now across. You know, across shifts, um, functions, locations, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that was the the survey. So, so summarizing what you know now, what um, what, what Kaiser can do to improve uh, improve performance of the improvement program. Okay, so so first leadership, right? So visibility and control. We tend to find that leaders um, that can't see the results. Um, don't pay it attention. It's not important to them because you're you're a leader now. And I found that when I first became a, a COO, I used to be all passionate about, you know, um, all, all of the softer side and the long-term side of improvement. And I got to a COO and saw how some some actually some tough situations, I saw how my own behavior became just, you know, just through the role, more reactive, had le far less time to, con to, to consider the the um the fundamentals and the, and the proactive and the long-term capability build is much more concerned about a shorter term. And that's, that's natural when you're a leader and you've got a, you're working for a CEO, CEO who's uh, pushing you for results every, 
every day and every week, right? But what we need to do for, for to, so to get leaders to pay attention, we need to bring that visibility and control, enable them to see the financial impact of everything and see the ROI and do the prioritization, provide the coaching and see what it means for, for them. Okay, so the next, the next one is the ta talent. So with what we can do with, with, um, with talent, we can, we can release capacity. We can, we, so we can give them more time by taking away a lot of the admin involved in improvement. We can actually integrate AI right into where they're solving problems and doing the projects. Uh, so anything that's difficult we don't know, we can either, it's either or, either we've got a human coach, a manager or a, a lean manager or someone like that who can, who can help us, or we can ask the AI. It seems, when we're testing in multiple industries, seems to know everything, whether you're a medical or pharma or, or automotive, it doesn't matter. It, it seems, you know, you ask it the right question, it tells you the answer. It's like one second. That profound breakthrough. You know, it's got all of, all of our knowledge technical knowledge at your fingertips of every single person on the, on the shop floor involved in solving problems. So a virtual coach available anywhere. So we can really help talent with, with the technical side of solving problems, but also with, their, with their, their, their capacity, because we're going to strip away all of the file saving and preparing presentations and all the building reports. You know, I used to lead improvement programs uh, and I'd be beavering away, doing a great delivery for a couple of weeks and I get an ask for an update and I spend almost two weeks <laughs> I, would, I would I would be then the the most skilled person at improvement in the in the organization. I get pulled off for two weeks um, to write a report, pull together all the data to pair a report. So you lose the skill. So so we can eliminate that, right? You, all, all this can be can be auto, or just automatic. Okay, so financials, right? So we we want to cascade the performance targets and link them all to the improvement project. So it's completely clear live at any point in time. This is the top-down target for this site, this team, this function. These are all their projects. They all add up like this. Finance are in there. They've updated all the numbers directly because they've been included from the beginning. Um, it's all live and, and, and I know exactly where I am. So as a leader, I'm now paying attention to performance improvement. And it just all needs to be instant. Uh, and it is all, all live and, and, and real time. Okay. So the next one, uh, collaboration. Okay. So... So collaboration, you know, is really, really difficult today. How, you know, if you if you if you have operations that that report to you, um, that operate across two shifts, three shifts, four shifts, five shifts, right? How do you collaborate across shifts? I mean, I've been in factories where uh, five shift operations, where literally a killer question I asked actually to improve it was, um, do the people in your shifts move across shifts? And the answer was no. So my hypothesis immediately is every shift you're running in this factory. Is operating the factory in a completely different way because it, it, it had been like 20 years since they uh, had actually significant movement of people across the shift so so collaborating across shifts really hard what about cross sites uh and there's a huge load huge workload that's put on um on improvement because we literally just basically re, 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 you know just solve all the problems in duplicate in every location uh, and we, if we can share them effectively we can find them with a search engine um or they're automatically presented to us because we search for something similar to that um, then, then I can start to replicate the copy, the learning from other sites much more easily. Um, so, so yeah, we, we, we provide that uh, and it'll even translate everything into whatever language. So hundred guys that runs in a hundred languages. Okay. So, um, I can do an improvement in Spanish and someone speaking Chinese can, can, would think the whole thing had been done in Chinese. Uh, so that, that, that capable, of, a translation capability. Okay. Um, all right. And then the last one, the technology. So then this is, this is the idea that one platform, so we're going to put some of, not all of the shop floor, but the, a proportion of the shop floor, team leaders, supervisors, production managers, engineers, uh, these maintenance, we're going to put these people in the application with the middle management, with the practitioners, and then with the management team for the site. So all the, the, sort of the three, it just described just the three main levels. We're going to put all of them in one application. They can all see the same thing. And it's profound because now, you can motivate the shop floor because they can prioritize all the improvements and capture all, 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 the, all, the, all, all the issues that they come across automatically prioritize per, per area. And then the actions and projects that are going on against the priority issues, the shop floor see, right, um, are um, visible to the shop floor. Managers and leaders and other people will work on those. The shop floor can always click in and see the status. So as a shop floor, you you've got this kind of real-time update on what's being done to help you. 
So you can maintain the motivation of the shop floor. And if you can maintain that motivation, you can sustain an improvement culture, right? So there's much more to say on that, but just a simple version, right? You have all the three levels in one application. So you can strip away all of these single point solutions like Excel and some automatic reports, finance in there, everyone in there together collaborating and aligned. Right. That, so that that's a, so these these are the five air the five areas the three of the four axes we've looked at where this sort of technology um, make an enormous impact on the effectiveness of our improvement program. The value is lying in the the project delivery and in the problem solving, and we never quite know where that knowledge holder is that can achieve that breakthrough. So this visibility and this control is really important, not only for leaders but for for, for all of the levels. Okay, okay, so I'm almost done with the, with the presentation part. So how am I doing for time? Okay, eight, eight, eight minutes, all right. So just summarizing, so what are the three things that you could go and do differently to improve um, your ability to, to your organization's success with cost reduction, right? So you probably already, probably already got some ideas, I'm, I'm sure, but my, my top three would be this, that you could just go and do, would be things like, um, Number one, sort of financial grip, right? So it's, it's pretty easy to have this system and have all the projects in and have all and finance in and all the benefits being tracked. So that all leaders have a total and are therefore motivated. They're now motivated by performance improvement, inspired by it, because they can see the value. It's gonna see, see if it's gonna hit their, they're gonna hit their targets or not. They can do something about it ahead of time, if not. Uh, and they can also see all the projects linked to that. And they can get in and unblock things, see if things are happening. So you, you know, what what's not happening <laughs> is as powerful is as powerful as as what is happening, right? So that financial grip with a with a with a the right system very powerful. The second one I think is improvement leadership. Um, so so this 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 idea of um, um, prizing um, proactive problem solving over the reactive behavior set. That's really easy to do. You can find examples of that and recognize those in a in a way that's more powerful than the, than, than the heroics. Um, and then this infectious coaching style, you know, um, in an infectious style of questioning, you know, how do you know? What's the best practice? You know, I want to sound like a broken record, recycling the same, you know, the same 20 questions and sentences that people pick it up and learn this style of improvement leadership coaching. And I think the third one is, I think, is the is the talent, you know. So if we have limited resources, we struggle to deploy these programs, and um, and we don't want to, we you know, forgive me, I've been a consultant, right? But you know, if we don't want to spend the, the big bucks on the consulting to do this, right? Because it is very very expensive. I did this for 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 years. If we want to do it ourselves, right? We've got to release the capacity. Well, well the way to do that is to release the capacity. Of, um, of people so that they can do this, right? Uh, and, and the way to do that is to get away from these applications that are not designed for improvement, that waste all our time, that create all this admin, all this manual presentation, preparation, uh, manual reporting. Um, and, 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 you know, we tend to have like a 1% like a or less uh, lean manager um, population. There are other names for that role, you know, lean managers. But um, they're scarce, right? So, so if we have one in the hundred or less, how do they coach all of our people? We can't. So it, 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 it always falls back to the line manager uh, and the right reporting ratio that it's possible to coach improvement. And how do we release that time? We don't, we don't want to hire more people. How do we release that time? It's by being more efficient. And technology is the way that we do that. So those are my top three for you. The financial grip, to motivate the leaders, uh, the improvement leadership approach um, so that the, the, the coaching is part of the line management role. coaching and problem solving is part of the line manager role uh, and, and then talent releasing the time so that line management can do this. Fantastic. Okay. So I can take some questions in a moment, but um, um, the, the uh, maturity assessment that uh, a handful of people completed and are the basis for this walkthrough um, that's still available, right? So you can, if you wish to, you're very welcome. If you if you go to the link and fill it out, we will we're delighted to just have a call with you afterwards and, and just talk about the scores and help you in any way we can. I mean, I I've in, in the past, I'm not 
I'm not a um, um, selling any coaching services here, but you know, be delighted. You know, just really, really happy to give feedback. Anybody who, who who's interested to do the survey uh, and take a call afterwards, you can really. Um, if you don't want to take the call, you can do the survey and still get your and still get the the feedback. So okay, so that's available to you. Please um, please go and, go and do it. You'll I guarantee you'll 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 get something out of it. With that, I think that's so. That's the end of my slides. Okay, so. I think we have uh, what, almost five minutes left, so we could take some um, some 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 questions. So there's quite a lot of content. I appreciate that, but I try not to make it. I hope it's not too complicated. I tried not to make it. I tried to make it as simple as I as I could. So I hope it hope it came across okay. Do we have questions in the in the audience, George? I saw you come off mute. Did you have a question? I did. <clears throat> yeah, Fire one away. question, Nick, is is and and not that we dove into your software at all, but. But the technology solution of using, you know, for example, your software, data entry and integration with existing ERPs, et cetera. I mean, is that, I mean, how does that go? Uh, yeah. As a so we, we, we do that. What I would advise you is that you don't, you, you won't, if you went down this road, you wouldn't go there for quite a long time because you already get a massive cleanup of data from, let, let, let me just make up a number. Let's imagine you have, across how many, I don't know how many sites you have out what your organization is like, but imagine you have 10 sites or something. And on each site, there's more obvious and less obvious. Let's say there's 20 projects going on per site, right? Okay, each project will have 10, 15, 20, 30 project files. You have a massive cleanup of all of those projects. All of those files are now in one application. So there's already an enormous cleanup of data. Um, it's really a little little further down the road where you start saying, okay, now we want to get really precise. Okay, so we want the live part number in Kaizap. So connect to the ERP, right? Um, and kaizap has got all the dashboards and reports. Now, um, in the beginning, it's a little dangerous in the beginning to do all of that in someone like Power BI. Other reports may be there, um, but the problem is um, you, you, this won't be, this won't be clear now. But you really you you, you lose okay you lose something if you go to Power BI too early. Because um, first of all, people need to understand the improvement and the alignment and, and they need to unblock and coach and present. And all of this is in Kaizap. So what we have found is if leaders go straight to something like a Power BI for a report, they're losing everything else. They're not really getting involved. They don't get involved heavily at all, of course. Um, but they're better to go to Kaizap. Now, later on, we're more mature. Yeah, okay, Power BI reports, we can we, we support that, right? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't start with the ERP or the Power BI. It's... I think it's two years down the road when you've really nailed it and you're really getting results, then you're in a position to say, okay, I want to automate some of these things much further. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, excellent, excellent. All right. uh, Fiona, if we could stop the recording as well, uh, that way folks can, can ask questions.